Hi, in this video we're taking a look at the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt or, as its pilots affectionately referred to it, the Jug, shortened from the word Juggernaut, which in modern parlance has come to suggest an unstoppable destructive force, but is in fact a reference to a very real type of vehicle, the Hindu cars of the Jaganth Temple in Puri, reputedly so heavy that they supposedly crushed any devotees unlucky enough to get in their way. And when browsing the qualities of the P-47, it's understandable how these two very different vehicles came to be compared. When fully loaded, the P-47 weighed up to 8 tonnes, was armed with 8 50 caliber or 12.7mm machine guns, could be fitted with 5-inch rockets and carry a bomb payload of 2,500 pounds or 1,133 kilos, which was a little over half the payload of a B-17 bomber. The P-47 was the creation of Alexander Kartveli, born Alexander Kartvelishvili in 1896 in Tbilisi in Georgia, which was then firmly in the Russian Empire. He later shortened his name to Kartveli when he emigrated to the United States and joined his fellow Georgian emigre, Alexander Desaversky, where he took the role of chief engineer, a role to which he was admirably suited, having been trained at the School of Aviation in Paris before working at the Louis Blériot Company. During this part of his life, Kartveli worked as a test pilot, but a leg injury put paid to this career, forcing him to pursue his ambitions for flight via the drawing board. His first task for the Seversky Aircraft Company before it was acquired by Fairchild and rebranded as the Republic Aviation Company was to co-design the P-35 with Alexander de Seversky. De Seversky didn't survive the Fairchild acquisition however, but Kartveli remained and developed concept works named XP-44 and XP-47. When it was found that they didn't meet the requirements of the Air Corps, he was called into a meeting with the United States Army Air Corps who gave him the following specifications. 1. An airspeed of 400 miles per hour or 643 kilometers per hour at 25,000 feet or 7,620 meters. 2. Armament of 6 50 caliber machine guns, preferably 8. 3. Armor plating to protect the pilot. 4. Self sealing fuel tanks. And 5. A minimum of 315 gallons or 1,432 liters of fuel. On the train back to New York after the meeting, Kartveli drew an entirely new design which he presented to the USAAC in the June of 1940 and which was ordered into prototyping by September. The XP-47B, as it was known, was of an all-metal construction other than the tail control surfaces, had slightly swept elliptical wings, an air-conditioned cockpit, and in the words of one of its pilots, a seat like a lounge chair. It was powered by a Pratt & Whitney R2800 double wasp 18-cylinder radial engine which generated 2,000 horsepower and it certainly needed it. The aircraft had an empty weight of 9,900 pounds or 4,490 kilos. Kartveli himself said of it, it will be a dinosaur, but it'll be a dinosaur with good proportions. Indeed, the proportions were so generous that it prompted some British pilots to joke that the Thunderbolt pilot could avoid being hit by the enemy by running around and hiding in the fuselage. The P-47 entered combat late in 1942, early 1943, notably with the 4th Fighter Group, a unit consisting mainly of American volunteers who had flown in the Eagle Squadrons, units made up of Americans who had volunteered with the RCAF and RAF rather than waiting until 1941 when the rest of the country joined in. The first combat mission was a fighter sweep over France, but it was considered a failure due to radio malfunctions. These were swapped with tried and tested British systems and missions resumed on the 8th of April. Just six days later, the Thunderbolt's first air-to-air -air victory was performed by Major Don Blakesley of the 4th Fighter Group when he downed a Fokker Wolf 190. On August the 17th, they conducted their first large-scale B-17 escort mission, claiming 19 kills against three losses. In the first three months of 1944, the P-47 shot down more German fighters than the P-51 Mustang and flew more sorties than the P-51, the P-38 and the P-40s combined. In time, the P-47 became the USAAF's fighter bomber of choice, with Thunderbolt pilots claiming to have destroyed 86,000 railroad cars, 9,000 locomotives, 6,000 armoured fighting vehicles and 68,000 trucks. Its effectiveness was not confined to a ground attack role, however, and the Thunderbolt accounted for 20 ME-262s and 4 Arado 234s. In the Pacific, Colonel Neil Kirby accounted for 22 Japanese aircraft, six of which he polished off in one sitting. In the game, we have a number of P-47s, including the P-47D-25, the P-47D-28, the premium American P-47M1RE, and the Russian premium 47D-27. 
The P47D25 has a maximum speed of 732 kilometers or 454 miles per hour and a turn time of 23.5 seconds. It's armed with eight 12.7 mm Browning machine guns which are supplied with 3,400 rounds of ammunition and have a reload time of 20 seconds. It can also carry up to 2,500 pounds or 1,133 kilos of bombs or 2,000 pounds of bombs which translates to 907 kilos and 10 HVAR rockets. Though in-game the P-47 can be used as an effective fighter, I prefer to use it in its ground attack role, but one that can defend itself on the way to the target drop, after which it can be used as an effective fighter, but keep in mind that height and energy are your friends. If you run out of those, you will be vulnerable. Even though, like its real-life counterpart, this thing can take a dramatic pounding and still make it home. Right, that's it for another video. Like it if you did or don't if you didn't. And if you enjoyed it and haven't subscribed, then you may want to consider that too. There's also a Facebook page you may or may not wish to like, where I'll post drive out requests and media not suited to YouTube. You can find the link to that in the description box below. Okay, cheerio chaps, and I hope to see you for the next one. Bye bye.